You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Interconnected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Interconnected, Dr. Raina Gilmore. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you are listening to Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I welcome you to enter on this journey with me as I explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you enter this space, you will be connected to a wealth of information. You will also realize that we are more alike than we are different, so we should use that to lift each other up as opposed to tearing each other down. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. My name is Dr. Raina Gilmore. I am a board-certified psychiatrist that specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am from Florida and currently practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. So it is November, and our monthly observations are... Diabetes Month, National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, Family Stories Month, Gratitude Month, Aviation History Month, Military Family Appreciation Month, Movember, Native American Heritage Month, Novel Writing Month, Adoption Month, and Peanut Butter Lovers Month, just to name a few. Today is actually is also World Kindness Day, so I hope everybody did something kind today. I'm sure somebody definitely appreciated it. This evening, I am going to focus on National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, and I have the pleasure of having special guests, Dr. Kendra K. Wooten. So Dr. Kendra K. Wooten is a board-certified family medicine physician who resides in Durham, North Carolina. This Philadelphia native who is a wife, a mom, and a member of the best sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, (laughs) who enjoys every aspect of family and community health. But her passion lately is in treating addiction. She graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1997 with a B.A. in biological basis of behavior. She attended medical school in Washington, D.C. at Howard University College of Medicine, which is where I met her. In 2009, she completed her family medicine residency at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, Florida. She has resided in North Carolina since 2003. 13, Dr. Wooten is committed to helping both patients and physicians understand better and treat the disease of addiction while maintaining work-life balance. She currently works in Greensboro, North Carolina at Fellowship Hall. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Kendra Wooten. How are you doing this evening? Good evening. Good evening, Raina. Hey! It's awesome, awesome, awesome to be here. I haven't talked to Kendra, and hopefully it's okay to call you Kendra. I'll call you Dr. Wooden if you course, like. But of course, of course. No, <laughs> um, no. my mom would have my neck if I if I didn't ask. But um, <laughs> yes, I haven't talked to Kendra in so long, so this is kind of like a reunion. So if we get a little sentimental, you know, please bear with us because this is my girl and I miss her. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. So can you just kind of give us a little background about yourself and and your interest in uh, dementia and addiction? Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, family medicine, we do it all from the cradle to the grave. Um, and, and most of us tend to find an area we kind of 
have more of a passion to to treat to work with well life tends to happen and that can kind of you know uh cause you to to become passionate about something and about mm, 2013 actually um my mother was diagnosed with dementia initially alzheimer's dementia and uh that's been an adventure mm-hmm. and it keeps going and going. Um, but I found that while medical school residency does a great job of helping doctors diagnose dementia, it surely did not teach me how to manage and take care of a loved one. The, the most loved loved one in my life mm-hmm. who, who has developed this, this, at times horrific disease. So that that was one of the main things that got me um just just learning as much as I can to help my mother have the best quality of life from now until forever. Okay. And my uh, my grandmother actually um had Alzheimer's dementia. We we think it was Alzheimer's. Um and so I, I definitely, um, while it wasn't my mother, it was my grandmother who was really close. And I saw my mother just mm-hmm. in in what you're t- speaking of. Um, I saw my mother care for her, you know, until her last days. And it, yeah. you, you're, you're absolutely right. People don't realize how much, I don't think that even can be taught you know, how, how to right. manage it, how much goes into it. Because first of all, it depends on what relationship do you even have with the person. And, you know, I think sometimes things like that can actually bring bond people. Because uh, yeah. I, I will say my mom and grandmother had somewhat of a, a, a strained relationship. But when it came down yeah. to taking care of her mother, Right. My mom stepped in, and I mean, I really look up to her to this day. The fact that she could, you know, put her own life to the side and yeah. put her all it into taking, because she had to put her all into taking care of my grandmother, who was an independent, strong willed, intelligent, right. not barely ever sick, you know, woman. And to see her right. kind of deteriorate. Because I used to live with my grandmother. I lived with my grandmother when I was in residency. And, wow. you know, that's that's when, and then I think towards the end, my towards the end of my residency, my mom came um, and my grandmother came to, to get a surgery. And my grandmother was here helping to take care of her and her recovery. And then, you know, once I left and everything, that's when things started to progress and right it's just it's very sneaky yeah. it's very sneaky and subtle the disease mm-hmm. is not blatant um and and you know i remember i would talk to my mother every day mm-hmm. uh after like this is around this time i was i would drive home from work and i would talk to her on my ride home and she always would ask me about how's that project you're doing? How how how's this? How's that patient you were worried about? Is everything going better? She would. It, it's not always as simple as does your loved one remember dates, right? Or, or do they instantly remember who you are? It's way more subtle. So at that same time, I remember I got a call from her doctor in Philly, and they said, "Are you the caregiver?" You know, you're, you're the emergency contact for this person. Um, we we got to come back to the hospital. She had just been to the doctor, and her labs were out of whack. Mm. So sent her to the hospital. She ended up in, in diabetic ketoacidosis, speaking of it being also diabetes month. Oh, wow, um, yeah. She's a diabetic. But, but uh, it was a subtle shock. For us, mm. so we can talk more about it after. Sure, sure. 
It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about the subtleness of dementia. Stay tuned. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counted counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru Way. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month and also Diabetes Month. And this evening, we're focusing actually on both. I thought it was just going to be uh, Alzheimer's disease, but we're also focusing on mm-hmm. diabetes just with our guests' uh, p- particular interest in the um, in dementia. And I have the pleasure of having special guests, family doctor, Dr. Kendra Wooten. And she was just telling us about um, the subtlety of dementia, how it's not always Oh, someone forgot dates or, you know, they, they forget They're walking right. out of the house or they're leaving, you know, right. keys in the bathroom or whatever, you know, um, it, it's a subtle, it's all, it's not always so overt. Um, and so you were right. telling the story about, um, the call you got from your mother's doctor. So I wanted you to continue on and, and to, yeah. with your story. So, so like, you know, so my mother ended up having um, something we call diabetic ketoacidosis, which just means her sugar was way too high. Um, mm-hmm. She was hospitalized. And when I went to visit her, two major things I noticed. One, in the hospital, just certain things she said. I'm just like, Mom, are you okay? I, I can't even remember or pinpoint what it was, but it, it was something about her conversation. She was a little aloof. The other thing was when I went into her home, my mother is an awesome woman. She's never been Martha Stewart when it comes to keeping the house thick and span clean, but it was horrendous. Uh. It was just um, unkept. You know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, foods in the refrigerator way too long. Um, uh-huh. And just, just kind of like a neglect of, of the home. Uh-huh. Um, so... So things like that, you've got to visit your loved ones. You've got to lay eyes on them. Because from the phone conversation, I would have never imagined anything was wrong. Right. But when I went to her home, when I spoke to her in person and asked her about things, it definitely started to, to show itself. 
And and I'm not sure if people realize if you do have a loved one you're worried about, you should, depending on their age, you should ask their primary care doctor to do or a psychiatrist to do a, a, a an assessment. For for mom, it was a geriatric assessment, but I don't know what would you call that in psychiatry. Um, mm-hmm. The person wasn't geriatric. Uh, I, guess, I don't know. I guess you would do a. Um, I know they do the the mini mental status uh, mm-hmm. exam a lot. Um, yeah, but and I'm not, not sure. Even, and it's not even as that's not as specific of a test. No, it's not. Yeah. As, you know, it's it's not the perfect test. Many of us have heard of the mini mental exam, um, where they'll ask you to do things like count. Um, backwards as far as you can from 100, mm-hmm. um, spell the word world backwards, backwards um, right. remember three things. It's, it's a little memory test, mm-hmm. but whoa. I remember my mother doing a test in the assessment where they said, okay, one is to A, S2 is to B, keep going. She was like three is to seven, four is to B. <laughs> Oh right. my goodness! Right. It, it it was shocking. You know, at the same time though, she was never late for a mortgage payment. She never missed a bill. You know, there was certain mm-hmm. parts of her brain that did not ever stop functioning, but there were other parts that were struggling. Mm. And how did how did this affect? her mentally and and you as the uh mentally initially wow um i remember bringing her from philly to north carolina to visit Mm -hmm. and i brought Mm -hmm. i bought a one-way ticket and my husband was asking me oh did you decide you're gonna send mom back on the plane or on the bus i was like i'm not sending her back i can't send my mom back not really knowing how far this extends and and when would be the day where she could wander off. Now, even to this day, we're about four years into this disease. She has not done things like wander off. She knows exactly Mm -hmm. who she is, who I am. She will tell me that I'm still the mama. But Oh, I'm sure she will. (laughs) (laughs) But but in many ways, um, it's brought us closer, but it's just challenging. It's challenging She's not as expressive of her emotions. Okay. Um, she there there is a in, in my mom's case there's a bit of depression. Mm-hmm. And and I even though I ask her I don't really get answers to why but I would I would think that it kind of comes from the fact that her total independence has changed. Mm-hmm. Now she lives in an apartment five minutes away in an independent living facility, not in assisted living, not memory care. Those are terms people need to be aware of, um, but independent. And, um, you know, the the main thing, Raina, that has really helped my mother more than any medicine or any doctor is being close to her family, loving on my grand, on her granddaughter, my daughter, my four-year-old. Mm-hmm. Um, what a cute know, self. My maternity leave. She, she's a doll, and mm-hmm. she, she's all about unconditional love. Mm. And, and, you know, the simple things that you teach a toddler are also simple things that help, I think, people with dementia kind of mm-hmm. remember certain things. You know, going over the ABCs with my daughter, oh, she loves it. But then I'm like, okay, great, mom's still practicing certain things. Her, her memory is still good. She's still learning new things, mm-hmm. um, but but it, it it also changes. She's just, she's not she doesn't have her same zeal. If that's the okay. way to put it. Mm-hmm. Yep, I definitely saw that. Saw that with my grandmother. I think with my grandmother was kind of more of a rapid uh, progression. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, she was all, always the life of the party, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. you could tell that she was she was just conflicted because, like, why? What, what is going on with my body, and I can't control it. So, 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about causes, signs, and symptoms of dementia. Talk more about that. We've already started. We'll be right back. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com. Or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, and I have the pleasure of having special guest family medicine, doctor, physician, Dr. Kendra Wooten. Hey. <laughs> Let me also put a plug in. Like I said earlier, she is a part of the best sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you. Anyways, there you go. Um, can you talk some about... <laughs> Some of the the causes, uh, signs, and symptoms of dementia and how they affect the whole body. So, you know, things that diabetes can play a major part in developing dementia. Um, You know, this is about your brain not getting enough oxygen. Mm. Slowly but surely, whether it's, you know, uh, one of the things that, um, for example, in my mom's case, at first, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia, and later it was found that she had vascular dementia. And some would say, who cares? It's dementia. But the causes, you know, Alzheimer's, there's like, there are these plaques that form on the brain. Mm-hmm. Whereas vascular dementia technically could be something that we could do more preventive things, hmm. like okay. monitoring our weight, eating a plant based diet. You know, exercising, um, one of the things, you know, you and I, we just talked about that we try to do when it's not two degrees outside is we right. walk, you know, mm-hmm. girls on the walk. Um, but exercise, um, maintaining healthy weight, not overdoing it with alcohol and, you know, definitely not drug use, but, but not overdoing it with alcohol use. Um, all these things can decrease our risk of stroke Mm -hmm. and and that's one of the things that my mother had an MRI uh, and there was evidence of a previous stroke but she lived alone so who knows when how long you know was there a fall was there something that went on that 
will remain a mystery. Um, mm. but, but definitely, you know, I, I couldn't even, I, I wish I could say everyone who has Alzheimer's, you know, it's all a similar type of thing. I, I'm right. going through my head thinking about different people I know. Um, mm-hmm. And and I can just tell you, in my mom's case, I just never, like, like who, us? Not us. I right. can't believe this is happening to us. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. My mom, my mom was a cigarette smoker for most of my life. Um, that the type two diabetes, hypertension, even though well controlled, it was still hypertension. Mm-hmm. Um, and and she definitely was a social drinker, but you know, altogether, I think those things definitely had an impact. Okay. On her developing this disease, um, so. You know, communicate with your family. One thing my mother did that that I really am proud of her for, before, I think she recognized things were happening and didn't quite come out and tell me, but she had me go with her to her banks and had me, you know, added on the account so that if anything were to happen, there wouldn't be a huge problem with me helping to deal with her financial issues. Um you got to have these difficult conversations with our loved ones because you mm-hmm. can't blame this. You, you can't say, you know, um, my mother probably started developing this. She's now 79, almost 80. Um, but about five years ago, you know, I definitely know people around that age, some younger, some older, but have this conversation when you're in great health. Talk about, all the important things to help prepare because the last thing that I would need right now while I'm caring for my mom is to struggle with trying to get um, proof of identity, proof, uh, her, her mm-hmm. power of attorney, her health proxy, all those types of things that allow me to say, um, to, to be her patient advocate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for her. Yeah, you bring up a good point because that is a hard um, conversation to have. I know that my mother has, you know, talked to me and my sister, tried to have these kinds of conversations. We're usually like, oh, we don't want, we don't want to talk, <laughs> we don't want to talk, mm-hmm. we don't want to talk about that. But I don't want to talk about you, that. you just right, <laughs> you fine now, you fine. Let's go get something to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. but it's yeah, but it, it definitely is is something you know, the conversation that needs to be had and you just kind of have to grin and bear it, you know, because yeah. you, you definitely never know whether it be dementia or anything else, you know, that exactly. that happens with, you know. Exactly. Um, and, and I'd like to also reiterate what you said um, earlier about what helped your mom the most other than any kind of medication or anything like that is, is family. You know, um, there's so many people out there struggling who don't have that. Uh, And I don't think I think we take family for granted um, a lot of times, especially here in America. I've talked to people Mm -hmm. from different countries where family is such a major part of their lives. So to live with their parents is not unheard of, like to. You know, right. you, you say, you know, what was the first thing we you hear people say, oh, once you turn 18, you out my house, you know what I'm saying, like that, mm-hmm. it, you know, um, it, you start to see things come in full circle. So it's like, OK, you took care of me. And now that you're struggling, you know, now it's comes back you. around and I'm take care of you. And it's just interesting. Like I said, I was, I was living with my grandmother. My mom came. My grandmother was taking care of my mom. Then when it turned into my yeah. mom, ended up taking care of my grandmother. So, um Fam- family is definitely important, um, and family doesn't yeah. have to be biological. It doesn't have to be blood, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but just having that community um, and and support, you know, they they know they know. I, I don't care what they how what, what stage they're in. They they know. Yeah, and and it's so important it's, to continue. Well, let me take a break. Touch. It's time for us to take a break. Yeah. 
I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about spirituality and the importance of touch. Stay tuned. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success, as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers, as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you're listening to Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. It is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month and Diabetes Month, and I have the pleasure of having special guest, family medicine doctor, physician, Dr. Kendra Wooten, and we're talking about dementia. Hi. Hello. So um, you were talking, uh, you were talking about uh, towards the end of the last segment about the importance of touch, mm-hmm. and I wanted to give you a chance to to finish that thought. You know. I, I don't remember exactly where I read it, but it, it, I read somewhere how important daily, you know, we're talking healthy touch, daily mm-hmm. healthy touch, a hug, how good a hug feels. So one of the things that I really, you know, I feel almost as if blessed. I know that there aren't many things that would have had me move my mom from Philadelphia mm-hmm. to North Carolina. She now lives five minutes away. I can lay eyes on her every day. I can give her a hug. I can feel her. I can smell her. I can, I can look her in the eyes and kiss on her. Um, with with dementia, some people say they that you you mourn them twice. You mourn initially with the diagnosis and the changes, and then mm-hmm. one day when she does, you know, meet the Lord, you know, I mourn her again. Um, mm-hmm. but, but that kind of goes into the spirituality um, mm-hmm. aspect that you mentioned. You know, I, I definitely, I, I feel like God knew what was around the corner and made things happen. I, I trust. I, I let my patients know. I don't impose it on them, but I let them know that I believe in God. Mm-hmm. My patients who, who um, I feel have some issues mental issues that don't have any type of belief in any type of higher power, I feel like they struggle more than those mm. that do. Okay. Have a sense of, of, of something bigger than. So for me, spirituality is the big picture. Is, is mm-hmm. You know, staying connected, reflecting, reflecting on, you know, what's going on in your world? How are you doing? Self-care, what's going on in the world, how much of it do I need to tune out or listen in on, Um, 
but but in the morning waking up, you know, just kind of taking a moment to be gracious, thank God, gratitude for for all of the blessings that that I have, no matter how pressured and rushed and no matter what's going on in my world, you know, or how busy my day is about to become, I try to start with gratitude. Mm. That's very important. You know, it, it, I, I found that how, how you start your day, it doesn't change how your day is going to go, but it definitely right. affects how <laughs> you re- <laughs> what don't we wish, but, uh, but it, it definitely, uh, affects how you respond to what happens throughout the day and, and being doctors, you know, you never know what's going to walk into your office. Uh, you right. know, you don't, you never know how your day is going to go. And some days are more stressful than others. Some days are more draining mm-hmm. than others. Um, and yeah. then. Some are straight to, up sad, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and to go from and again, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to go from that to, and then we actually do have lives. People, I don't think people realize that, but we do actually do yeah. have lives outside of work, uh, even though work right. takes over a, a large part of our lives. Um, so if you aren't grounded in something, like you said, um, and, and, you know, spirituality doesn't necessarily mean religion. It's not equal to religion. Correct. It's not, not synonymous with religion. You know, religion is a part of spirituality, but spirituality goes right. way beyond that. You know, um, just, just what, whatever you, feeling that there's something bigger than you that is helping you get through yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and being able to transfer that positive energy in that, you know, how someone says, gosh, I love your spirit, you know, to be able yeah. to transfer that yeah. energy to others, um, I think is a part of, of spirituality as well. And, um, and and I agree with you. I think whenever, I think spirituality is pr- is a protective factor in a lot of different uh, illnesses, whether they be medical or or mental illness. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it definitely helps. It, for one, it gives you a sense of community. Um, and, and we talked mm-hmm. about how important that is, and and um, the importance of touch, not just physically, but you know, there's, there's emotional touch, there's, there's spiritual touch, you know, there, there's just connecting with someone without having to physically touch them. Um, right. right. I and, def- and I think too, you know, let's be honest in our, in our careers, we've come across people who don't always have that family, right. that, you know, that we're blessed to have. Right. What do, what do they do? You know, knowing that there is a higher power that cares for you, that each and every one of us matters. Mm-hmm. Each and every one of us um, is here for a purpose, a, a purpose of good. Um, it, it helps to know. You know, when I, I simply look around in any room that I'm sitting in, and I look at all the, the stuff, the things, mm. you know, be it parts of a building or the plants outside, you know, we can't explain that. We can't explain, you know, we're talking about the chilly weather today. We can't explain that versus the sunny, you know, beach weather that we'd rather be in. Yes, um, Lord. There, there's a higher power that is running things. Mm-hmm. And, and for me in my world, in my life, it helps me to acknowledge that and and to be be thankful and to, to constantly ask her for help mm-hmm. because I, I don't know what's going to happen the next time I run into a challenge with mom uh, or, or you know right right but it, to me and it's very important definitely definitely it's time for us to take a break I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about harmony, balance, compassion, fatigue, self-care, all of it. We'll be right back. 
author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and Tune in radio. French Rastafarian baker chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. It is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, as well as Diabetes Month, among a lot of other different awareness months, uh, but that's what we're <laughs> focusing on this evening. <laughs> and I have the pleasure of having special guest, family medicine physician, Dr. Kendra Wooten. And we've been having a very fruitful discussion about dementia and her, her personal ties to dementia and how do you diagnose it, causes, the subtlety of it, the effects on both the person going through it and the person, the caregiver. We've been talking about it all because that's, that's all a part of it. Yeah. So I wanted to focus on uh, on the caregiver um, in this segment. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I think uh, caring for um, an elderly person um, itself can have mm-hmm. its challenges. Uh, but then, you know, you add on top of that, someone who is going through dementia adds a whole nother layer and level to it. Um, and I didn't think I realized what compassion fatigue was until my later years, because uh, I've definitely been right. through it. Care, You know, uh, mm-hmm. as physicians, we definitely go through it. Um, and, yeah. and that's basically, uh, and basically it, it has to do with, you know, you caring so much for other people that you find that you are tired, low energy, maybe irritable. Um, and yeah. you know, and it's nothing, uh, and it's hard to find a, you know, an identifiable cause of it. And it's not something that you can just like take a nap or, you right. know, take a right. Those things help. Now, but take a nap or go for a walk or, you know what I'm saying, wine, cheese, sex, whatever, right. all of that stuff. All that stuff. Right. It's not going to, you know, take care of it. Um, <laughs> they yeah. help now. They do help now in, in, in moderation. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, um, so it is important that you are making sure that you're taking care of yourself because you cannot be fully invested in taking care of someone else if you're not taking care of yourself and you can lose yourself in the process. I know I saw that uh, yeah. with mom, you know, how she she put herself fully into taking care of my grandmother and, you know, lots of times neglected her own care just to make sure that my grandmother got what she needed. And then she didn't realize that until after yeah. my grandmother passed away. And then she was like, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, now what? Yeah. Because that was life. I mean, you, you know, my planner, if you saw a, pay, a, a month in my planner, 
Mm-hmm. There are so many appointments for my mother um, from dental. She's getting implants because the whole, you know, I want her quality of life to be as good as it could be. Um, mm-hmm. and, and she had dentures and they were just not working. So we're getting implants. Um, okay. But also just, you know, I'm, I'm also, as you mentioned, a wife, a, a mother mm-hmm. of a four-year-old. And so if I'm not taking my child to the doctor, I'm taking my mom to the doctor, um, flu shots for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, but, but at some point I do. I have to like escape things that um, I find, you know, sometimes just going to the mall. I don't even have to buy anything. Just walking around mm-hmm. looking at things by myself. Or, or um, I love being a girly girl dressing up makeup. Mm-hmm. I like to go to makeup classes um, so that when I do get gussied up, I look like I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but whatever it is, like you said, you just got to escape. We mentioned uh, spas. I love getting massages and things like that. Now, that yes. is a treat. I don't get that often. I, I don't know get that's it often, right. But, you know. um, but it is it's so important because, you know, in the, in the beginning especially, it was so hard. Mom actually lived with us for a while, and we just found as a family, my husband and I felt it wasn't the best for our family at that okay. time. Mm-hmm. It was better for her to socialize during the day while we were at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those type of things. So for us, that's what worked. But, you know, everybody is different. Every family, every family's financial situation is different, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever works. There's no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. As there's long no as right nobody's getting hurt in the process. I mean, you know, or neglected in the process. There's there's no right or wrong. There's definitely no right or wrong. How did you, how are you able to, I don't want to question this. So I know that, you know, in being a psychiatrist, I have to tell myself, like, if my if my family is having some, you know, or having some issues mental health wise, that you know, I'm the yeah. family member and not the doctor. How do you, you know? Is it hard? Do Do you have blurred lines? I guess with that yeah. when it comes to because it's hard for <laughs> yeah. me because I'm just like, gosh, I'm trying to talk like a psychiatrist, but I'm also mm-hmm. as a daughter or as a sister or as a aunt or as a, you know what I'm saying. So, how do you find yeah, that? But you know. I find that being a physician is one of the greatest blessings in our lives because we often, we don't know it all, but we know how to find out. If Mm -hmm. we don't know exactly, we can go and ask, you know, we have a friend in that specialty to go and talk to more about it and get a second opinion or, hey, are we barking up the right tree here? So so with dementia, for example, um, fine, mom was diagnosed. Now what? Right. Now what do I do? You know, um, just under so so. You know, big picture. Absolutely yes. You always go with your gut. If I feel as though someone, um, for example, mom, mom had a primary care doctor who would always ask her, "How is your memory?" Now, one thing that is important to know about dementia: a lot of people who develop dementia are not kind anymore. They they grumpy, right. combative, defensive, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. went through a strong stage of that. That was mm-hmm. extremely hard. This wonderful woman that loved on me my entire life, we, she was so defensive, she began to believe I was trying to steal from her. I'm like, still what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, come on now, I'm taking care of you. But nonetheless, you have to learn ways to engage them, distract them, and not argue. You can't argue. They're not living in the same consciousness that they once were. So there's no reason to debate them. If right. my mother really thinks that this guy is purple, polka dots, you know, I'm going with it. But yes, I use my medical knowledge to help us all the time. Okay. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to wrap up. Stay tuned. Now. 
master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. It is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, and I've had the pleasure of having special guest, family medicine physician, Dr. Kendra Wooten. And first off, I want to say thank you so much for doing this this evening. Um, It's a very important topic, uh, a misunderstood topic, one that's not talked about a lot. Um, And so... Hopefully, um, people can gain some awareness. Um, I want to first, uh, well, second, because I did my first already, uh, say a <laughs> inspirational saying, and that is the will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. And that's by Confucius. Again, the will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. And that's by Confucius. No matter what state of mind you're in, no matter if you are suffering from dementia or or dealing with anything that affects your memory or any other faculty, still try to win and succeed to to the last days of your life because that is going to yes. what's going to help to keep you great so like to give you a, an opportunity to talk about any projects or books hint 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 yes. that you have out there I- <laughs> <laughs> so i am a co-author in the Superwoman Survival Stories, produced by Swiner Publishing Company. Um, I'm Chapter 5, but this um, was an opportunity for me to share some of the adventure of mom and dementia, living and loving her, learning all about unconditional love. Um, My goal now is to work on a children's book, because I think... um, I love children's book. I'm reading them all the time to my four-year-old, and, and I want to be able to share this topic with that world, um, expose them to this, because kids really, um, you know, they need to understand what's going on with my mom and my papa. Um, so, so definitely, you can see Superwoman Survival Stories. You can get pick one up on Amazon.com. It's 
a bestseller, um, one of Amazon's bestsellers. Um, yeah, and and I'll be fighting in the world of addiction in Greensboro, in Durham, North Carolina. Okay. Any other ways that people can follow you or? Uh, Instagram, Kendra Wooten. I don't have any fancy names. Um, it's Facebook. okay. You don't need it. <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, people have to get too fancy. Come back and let's, 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 yes. let's talk some more. You are always welcome to come back. You're, I mean, you know, one thing I appreciate about you, I, I remember, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. There's no right or wrong on this show. That's why I love it so much. But I, 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 I always remember just talking about positive spirit, just what kind of a positive spirit you had, because Howard was the struggle. You understand me? The struggle was yeah. all the way so real. And <laughs> the fact, I mean, all the way so real, all the way so real. So I, I yeah. just remember just just your positive light that kind of helped me get through. And I remember the smoker and yes, being up there when we were doing the smoker for you guys. Uh, and we, uh, and that's just something to celebrate, uh, you know, matching and, and graduating and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But I remember I was doing a, we were doing a song at the end and I just looked at you and you were just, just the way that you were like, yes, go girl. That just really made me. Mm. So that'll forever be in my heart. Anyways. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> for entering this journey Yay! of the mind, body, and spirit with me. I hope everyone has a great Bye. week. Stay kind, yes. stay connected, and love one another. Take care. God bless. You've been listening to Interconnected with Dr. Raina Gilmore. Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.